With bony hands, I hold my partner. On soulless feet, we cross the floor. The music stops as if to answer. An empty knocking at the door. It seems his skin was sweet as mango when last I held him to my breast. But now we dance this grim fandango and will for years before we rest. Point and click style games have been around for a long time, ever since the creation of Sierra's King's Quest series. Before the use of advanced AI and high definition graphics, a lot of computer games depended on three things, a mouse, a keyboard, and a floppy disk copy of the game. As technology advanced onward with the invention of home consoles, the PC market still held strong and brought along SimCity, Dune 2, Doom, and Sam and & Max, and shooters such as Wolfenstein 3D. Funnily enough, the game received several awards, such as the Computer Adventure Game of the Year in 1998 by the Academy of Interactive Arts and Sciences after its publication, praising the, its graphics and in-depth story that made it just like an interactive movie than just a game. Tim Schafer, the creator of Double Fine Productions, who would go on to herald Broken Age and Brutal Legend, among others, to work on them. But only Grim Fandango would go on to receive a remastered version by Double Fine. In an age of remastered games and re-releases on next-generation consoles, how does Grim Fandango still hold up. Is it a classic or a redacted copy? Let's find out. Manuel. Please, call me Manny. Sorry, Manny Calavera is your typical travel agent for the Department of Death in the 8th Underworld. He makes sales, he heralds lost souls to the office, and, well, his job basically counts as him being a grim reaper. Nice bathroom! He's the best at what he does. Well, he was. A few months ago, Manny left for several black clients with no sales for the Number 9 Express, the fastest way to get to the Ninth Underworld, the land of eternal rest for newly deceased people. However, his associate and boss, Domino Hurley and Don Capal, are making it very hard for him to get a rich dead safe, his one chance to stay on as an agent. With the help of a demon mechanic and wannabe driver named Glottis, Manny makes it to the living world where he partners in a rigged reaping of a mass food poisoning. Furious at this, he decides to take a job from Domino's Files by breaking and entering into the pneumatic system for the Department of Death by tricking the mechanic, where he subsequently meets Mercedes Colmar, or Meiji for short. As he is about to give Meiji her ticket, her claim is rejected, leaving Manny to give her the on-foot four-year journey to the ninth of the world, causing Manny to be fired for his incompetence by Don Copal. Now, Manny is charged to find Meiji, get his job back, and face his four-year journey, journey of this soul, while being chased by a mysterious organization bent on profiting of good people's lives for their chance of making it to the land of peace. Manny is now a pawn in this dance of death, politics, and noir romance, which may or may not end well for him. Grim Fandango maintains the keyboard control mechanic, as well as the point-and-click directionals. The new addition of the console controller adds a familiar and more modern way to move around through the land of the dead. The game itself, apart from plot points and major dialogue trickery, focuses on very subtle puzzles. Some are obvious, from getting the pneumatic system clogged up to stopping an elevator with a forklift, which is harder than it sounds. They may require you to do it multiple tries, and you will need to look very hard for them, as Schaefer wants you to work for your reward. By the way, it's still worth the pain. Visuals are okay, the updated textures are a nice thing to look at, with the exception of the in-game cutscenes looking like they were just imported from the old game. But one thing to mention here is the nice addition of the texture switch from the updated graphics to the classic 1989 PC port graphics. The music is a classic combination of jazz, mariachi music, and rock and roll, creating a dynamic soundtrack that is memorable and fits the setting of each scene perfectly. So the controls are universal across consoles and computers. So what are the cons? They suck. They're responsive, yes, but sometimes you can make Manny either run into a wall, rock around in circles, or just have him not move at all. The car scenes that are part of the major game uh, are disgusting with the point and click mechanics, making you either move one way or another way. There's also the fact that there is no auto scene function whatsoever, as the other remastered games have fixed and put in which has it remind you of the moment you leave Manny's office. While I love my autosaves, the fact that I have to manually save is jarring to say the least. The things that have stayed in the official PC port has made its mark, which isn't what I expected from the remastered version of this game, as the advertising has claimed that it has improved dramatically on the art style and mechanics. So, does Grim Fandango still hold up after all this time? 
I am happy to say, yes. Yes, it does. Grim Fandango still holds strong in the remastered and original versions of the game. While the controls may not be gentle for point and click users, the added nostalgia factor with the bonus of developer commentary for the remastered version is still great. For those who have never played it before, it makes it a worthwhile pickup for a PC game that is strong in storytelling and feels like a soul-searching journey that brings you closer to the people that you've loved.